And was that was that Yokumi Shebata in your hair then? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take for you to get your hair? No, I've always had hair, curly yeah, hair. I was born with lots of things. You see my pictures in the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, the pictures in the book as well. Book, I have quite a number go, of them. You, and guys, if you, go, if you go to the very beginning, you see when I was one year old. Okay. Right from. Uh, just search for them, and okay. you will see my baby picture. Wow! So I've always yeah. thank you. Yeah, but I don't drink alcohol. You so know, it's non-alcoholic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Me too. Me thank too. You. I don't drink alcohol. Why is everybody laughing at you too? It's because of the effect. It's a sound effect. They do it all the time. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. I believe you. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. Hey, you, now you're proper proper dadaba. Is that it? Mm -mm, I wasn't. Yeah. I was a jabba. A jabba. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you were traveling all around then, right? Um, or it was Stardom that brought yes, that? Yes, it was Stardom that brought that. Okay, I don't want to jump the interview. Let's start from the scratch. Okay. Maybe a little background about you would do for those of us who came to meet the name and not the person, G-Man. Okay. So give us a, a brief background of yourself. Okay, so basically, um, I was born to two uh, teachers. My dad was a teacher. My mom was a teacher. And basically, I found out that I had the talent to dance mm -hmm. right from day one. Whoa. So, dancing came naturally. Mm -hmm. Any music that I hear? Okay, I could dance to uh, videos. Music videos was not there mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. But I'll hear songs and I'll create my own moves. Oh, wow. And yes, I started dancing to James Brown. Way, way, way. And as, as you can see, yeah. my kitty pictures. Wow. You want to show everything? No, just the pictures. <laughs> just the pictures. And okay. I'll be telling you guys more about this book is yet to <laughs> launch. Because right. this is a what, limited copy. I saw this on yeah. Facebook and I decided to give you a ring right. so that right. we so, do this. So basically, that's how I started. And uh, I used to dance to LPs and uh, 45s mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how my dancing career took off. Okay. And I became the first um, disco dance champion in Ghana. First what? Disco dance, dance champion, champion in, in Ghana. Ghana. Right, yeah. It's on record. Yeah. Which year was uh, this? This was in 1980. 1980? Uh, yes. And eight years later, they'll give birth to another <laughs> champion like myself. I also okay. was, yes, in, right. my, in my so, dance So uh, we had Club Babylon in Laboni mm -hmm. that used to hold dancing competitions during the long vac mm. when we'd come back from school. Mm -hmm. And I used to win everything. Anytime they had dancing competition, mm. I would go. And then it got to a time the people say, it's okay if it's dancing, we are not dancing. <laughs> because they knew the answer already. They gave up before the judges could. <laughs> Interesting. So then I left and these are some of the pictures. Uh, then I left. This came later. Okay. Then right. I left Ghana and I went to the UK. Yeah. And I was the first Ghanaian to ever participate in the World Disco Dance Championship. Championship. Yeah, before then, nobody thought it was possible for any Ghanaian to enter that. I did it so well later, went after me when I opened that. Many I years after. Later, and became the world disco dance champion. Mm. I moved on one series of dance contests in Europe and then went to the States, entered into a Michael Jackson lookalike contest and won that too. Wait, mm. hold on. Let's take that, that again slowly. For those who are sleeping or reaching out for their remotes. So... so um, after winning a series of competitions mm. in England, mm -hmm. I went to the U.S. The U.S.? Okay. Michael Jackson had just come out with the Thriller album mm -hmm. at that time. So I went to the U.S. This was in 1984. And then became the world's best Michael Jackson lookalike. Wow. This is huge. And that is when I started doing, where your hands are, you can see yes. the Michael Jackson. Okay. Uh, go, this is it? Go the next one, okay. I think. Uh, the or, next, the, or the one, or before. the one before. The I think it will be the because this this one I see Aquaba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your grandfather is here, Aquaba. Your grandfather. Okay. Hello. Okay. So so you see that this one. Uh, yes. Camera, All can right. you pick this for us? Yes. Camera, can you pick this for us? All right. So okay. that's that's when I used to do Michael Jackson. Thing. Wow. Hey. Oh, so too small. Can do, can do. Oh, so the Abby. But but all that is in this book. Yes, everything, everything. And this is the untold story of the shocking journey from pop stardom to death row. That's right. And this is from fame to shame. To shame. That's it. From fame to shame. I don't want to give out what 
you might want to read later on, mm. but just to tease us a little bit, this is something you've written down. Yeah. How long did it take you to put this together? Um, over 20 years. 20 years yeah. of pen to paper? Yeah, over 20 years. Started in jail? Yes. You started writing this mm -hmm. in jail. What took you to jail? Uh, I had an issue with a taxi driver that passed away. And uh, if you Google it, it's all there. So that part, it's easy for everybody to read about it. Mm. But this part, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote this book, to help the young generation, to know that you can achieve fame, but maintaining fame is another thing altogether. True. True. And from fame, you can come down to shame. True. And that is the purpose of this book. Wow. What was that life-transforming moment for you in jail? Because when I said you were coming on the show, mm. a lot of elderly people who saw the ad were like, Giovanni, is he alive? Mm. Giovanni, do you know who you have on your show? Like, mm. do you know? Suddenly I Googled it. Google, Google is not telling the story. Okay, so... You know, that's what so the story is here. <laughs> It's like, this guy is a legend. And we're yeah. not talking about your regular Joe you Google and get old. Yeah. This is a guy that you die to see on stage mm -hmm. perform. So you started dancing way before the singing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was after I taught doing the Michael Jackson look like all of the world. Yeah. Michael Jackson at that time was so huge that he couldn't come into small venues. And small venues where he could not fit, I fit. So you were performing for Michael Jackson? I was performing in his name and making lots of money. <laughs> Ah, Michael Jomina. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jomina is my late friend. Oh, yeah? You yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, he was a very good So friend. you were sentenced on that day, 96, right? Yes, I was sentenced on May 15th. To death by hanging? Yes, to death by hanging. Tell us that story. Um, I was of the opinion that the court would have understood that what happened was accidental. But in Ghana, we are more emotional than rational. And I have a, ver I have a chapter in this book that talks about that. Mm -hmm. Like in Ghana, if somebody says, oh, I shook his hand, and my man who disappeared, mm -hmm. people will beat you before they find out yeah. that it's not even true. Yeah, true. Okay, so as soon as what happened happened, people were like, I was sentenced to death even before oh, I stood trial. Part of public opinion. That's it. Mm. So um, the sentence was not what I expected, but it came when it came. And at the end of the day, I had to give my life to the Lord mm. because I knew that nobody understood exactly yeah. what has yeah. happened. So which other way can I go but to ask the Lord to plead my case for me? Mm. And I spent 14 years uh, in the prisons. 14 years. 14 years. You thought you were not going to make it out. Like, yeah, this is the end of the road for you. Oh, the good thing is that before I was sentenced to death, I become born again, and the Lord had promised that I would not die and that I was going to come out and declare his good name. So that was the hope that I held on to. Let's, let's oh, talk about that experience with God. Yeah. When did it happen? Do you remember the date? What exactly happened? Okay, okay. see, like people ask me, how did you become born again? Mm -hmm. You know when you were young and you will go out and mess with somebody mm -hmm. and they want to beat you up, mm -hmm. you run home. Yeah, yeah. The reason you run home is because you know once you get into your gate, you are covered. You are covered. Mm -hmm. So when the devil slaps you, you find a way to your father. And that's exactly what happened to me. I knew that there was no way I was going to survive what I have gotten myself into. So I needed the intervention of the Almighty, and I had the divine intervention. The Lord says, if you will accept me mm. as your Lord and personal Savior, yeah. I will deliver you. And the Lord delivered me. That's wow. why I'm a pastor today. Wow. You're a man with a promise. So your mission on earth. Now, I'm going to ask this because before you came here, yeah. I asked a few people what you've been up to since mm. you got out. And that was, uh, you were pardoned, right? Presidential pardon, is yeah. that it? Uh, and I was told that even when, you, well, it's been a long time since you got out of jail. Mm -hmm. and you've been consistent visiting the prisons. Yeah. You have this prison evangelism yeah. and backing on. Yeah. Well, I hope all that is in the book, by the way. Everything is in there. Last week you were at um, Texano Police Station. Yes, I was. Someone behind bars actually sent me a message that you came there to minister to them with food and all that. That's right. Wow. Because when I was arrested, Texano Police Station was my first sales. And that's where I became born again. So as soon as I came, I've been there twice to go and minister to them. Mm -hmm. And when I go and I speak to the inmates, 
they understand better. Mm -hmm. Because they know where they are and have been before. Mm -hmm. I teach in New York City, mm -hmm. and the biggest jail in New York is called Rikers Island. It holds 15,000 men. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when I started going there as a chaplain, they didn't understand where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they're very hardened yeah. guys over there. But the day I took a video from here and showed them the guilt here, they were like, wow, you Do went through all that? Mm. Exactly. So until you walk the walk, you can't talk the talk. This in no means <laughs> means that you have to go to jail eh, to come here on Showbiz 360. Please stay away from you understand? And uh, let me just remind you that the book officially is going to be out somewhere this year. Yes. You uh, have a date? Probably, no, we don't have a date yet, but the demand yeah. has started so yeah. much. Yeah. I wanted to do it next year in the beginning, okay. but then people are saying we need copies right now. Yeah. So I'm talking to some publishers yeah. and we're trying to see how best we can get enough. This will be an interesting read, 334 pager. That's right. Uh, from fame to, to shame. shame, the untold story of the shocking journey from a pop star. What are some of the things you enjoyed as a pop star before your issue? Oh, everything that you can think about. Women? Yes, women. And all the things that comes with money, me. everything. You were not buying, you were, you, were, you were getting a lot of things for yes, free. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, I, I, I even had the opportunity of um, um, fine. Um, a private, a private jet because they rented a, a plane for me. Private jet? Yeah, yeah. Which year? Um, this was in 86, before you were born. You trusted the pilots then? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, <laughs> because I had to travel forward and back performing, you know, they, they hired a four-seater jet for me. And the guy was an instructor. So when we take off, he will just say, okay, take over now. And, you know, a little guy from... Accra, Ghana, flying in a private jet. And this were some of the privileges that came with being famous. Hi. Hey. So look at your famous celebrity today and ask him, you get jets. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about, someone wanted to know your relationship with uh, Jagger P, the actor. Uh, unfortunately, he, he went to jail with you. Yeah. Why is he now? I have no idea. You guys are not in talking mm, terms? No. <laughs> Because, you see, there are some friends, you know, as fair weather friends. I talk about it in the book. Okay. You know, fair weather friends are people who will hang around with you when the weather is good. When the weather is bad, they will turn their back on you. So it's not every friend that is a friend. Sure. But, you see, you get to know your friends when you're in trouble. Yeah. And that is one of the things that, you see, <laughs> when you're famous, people will hang around you. Yeah. Yeah. They are known as groupies. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, when you're in trouble, they will not be there. True. Sure. They will move on to the next. True. Sure. And God allowed me to go through that for a purpose. Mm. So today I have brothers, I don't have friends. Wow, I love that. Mm. Uh, but he also went, someone who said he also went to jail for your crime. No, so he didn't go for my crime. Please clarify that, because the narrative out there is that you went out, brought a gun, shot mm. someone dead, and because well, he was an that, accomplice. See, that is accomplice. How, uh, how, how do you accompany somebody that, you see, like when a car gets an accident uh -huh. and you are in, yeah. do they take you? to jail for being a passenger in that car? No. Exactly. So people have to get their facts right. Yeah. That's why I've written this book. Yeah. If you want to know the facts, I will not sit here and okay. say it. Okay. Get the book and you will know the facts. I, I can't wait. <laughs> Is there a number you want to drop now so no, that we don't, I don't forget? No, I, I don't have a number. No, for the drop. book, I mean. I, no, I don't have a okay. number yet. Okay. Uh, because, because I'm not certain of the date. Okay. So you are so privileged to see it for the first time. Yeah. You understand? Thank you. But I'm it's honored. going to come up, and yeah. when the time comes and up. And when it's done, I would have copies on all yeah, my friends who join me on the show. Definitely, That guys. I promise you that. Yeah, please. I will, I will get you copies. Please. And, we'll and do for this, your viewers. Yes, we'll do this on the 3FM Drive. We'll have a whole fundraising segment on there. So we support your ministry because Thank you. this is a calling. It is a calling. Yeah, this is a calling. You don't just wake up and say, from fame to shame. Spell fame. Uh, uh, <laughs> we have a few questions here. All right. What next for you, G-Man? Yeah. What next for you? At uh, the moment, I take one step at a time because uh, right now I'm concentrating on getting this book. It's very important to me for the youth of this nation to get to know because most of them uh, grew up. Yesterday, I'll tell you a quick story. Mm -hmm. I was at a Crown North uh, post office, mm -hmm. okay? And a young man uh, came around. He says he sells screen protectors. Okay. So I gave him my phone to put it on. And then 
I asked him, what do you do? He says, I'm a dancer. So I sat back. I said, really? Okay, I said, take a picture of me. Then he took a picture of me. How old are you? He says, he's 19. I said, okay, go around, ask anybody if they can identify who this person is. And if you can see that, then I would give you a gift. Because he had no idea who I was. So he sent me videos of him dancing. Okay. <laughs> And he was talking to a dancer and says, I'm a dancer, I'm a dancer. I said, okay, good. Take a picture. And he came back and still says, well, all my friends don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. All right. The so are I sent him, I'm sure he's watching right now. Yeah. Because I sent him the, the poster okay. that you sent me. Yes. And I asked him to watch, to watch this the show. Yeah. So my dancer... My dancer, Fine. I'm sure you are watching now. Now you know, the now story. You know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a big man. He's a very, very big man. First of all, he's a big man. Okay. Uh, another question here for you. Giovanni, it's great you have a legend like this on your show, but please, what happened that fateful night? We really want to know. Maybe a teaser to the book. Uh, that night. It wasn't a night. It was okay. a day. Meaning he's below 20. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... <laughs> Uh, just get a copy and you'll get everything. Yeah, but yes. anything to tease us with? For those who've not been following your, your well, story? Well, for... basically, like I'm saying, somebody that had stardom, then one day you get up and your life has changed. So you went from being a star to being a criminal. And you're treated as a criminal. You see, when your story changes, people change around you. Okay? The very prison officers that used to... Be fans. You know, be fans now... I remember Tessano Police Station. I used to drive because I live in CFC Domi. Okay. So that's the route that I go home every day. I had a sports car. And every time I got there, you know, they recognize my car and they say, Masa, your boys, they will find something for us and I'll throw them something. The day that the incident happened, it was the same police station. And they said, go inside, foolish man. That's it. So when your story changed, people change around you. Then guess what? The day I was released, they came to pick me up from Ankafu Prisons. Mm -hmm. That was where I was released. Mm -hmm. And then my sister who came, he came with a truck. And I said, can I drive? Because I've not driven for 14 years. Yeah. And she says, can you? I said, I really want to drive because I miss driving. So she gave me the car. And just as we were going, there were officers who had just closed from the early shift. And they wanted a lift. So I took them at the back of the truck. And as I was driving, when they get to where they are going, they say, Masa, you see where I am. So the prisoner now was the master because the story has changed. Wow. When your story changed, people change around you. Wow. What's the relationship with you and former president Kufour? He was the one that gave you the president. Yes, he was the one that mm. God used. The good thing is that uh, he doesn't know me personally. Oh. And I don't know him. I've, I've not met him, but I intend to present one of these books. books. That to would him. be wonderful. You would yes. love to hear that yes. whilst he's alive. Yes. Uh, let's have another one here. Giovanni, this man, my dad will not stop talking about this man. In fact, his song was recorded before you were born. <laughs> It's true, Mum. Uh, but see, the song is evergreen, still very refreshing to listen to. How did you get those kicks? Who went? Uh, who worked on the production? G major. Um, G major was produced by a, a guy whose name is Joe Otis, and he used to be a member of the Inner Circle Band. We recorded it in England in 1986. Whoa! And it was released in Ghana in 1987. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you are right. I was born in the Let me respect myself. Um, Giovanni, about prison life has much, uh, much changed since it came out. No. It's the same. I was there yesterday, and, and it's practically the same. Because um, <laughs> nobody cares about prisoners. So wow. nothing has changed, really. There wow. are people in there who, who don't have to be in there, and they're there. If you have the opportunity to interact with the president or those who have what it takes to make decisions to impact the life of prisoners, what would you say? And this is your camera. Oh, yeah. I, I would say that there are a lot of uh, people who are in jail right now who do not have to be in jail because prison is supposed to be a place of reformation. Yeah. So after five years, six years of keeping somebody in jail, if that person doesn't reform, 
then what's the point? That means that there's something wrong with the system. The system, let me give you an example. Somebody smokes one Rural. joint mm -hmm. of weed. When you are arrested, you are given 10 years. When you go into the prisons, they sell more weed in the prison than outside. Mm. So how have you reformed that You come out as a weed seed, chimney, chimney crane. That's it. So if a person does not reform in prison, they come out worse than they went in. So there's no ex-convict who is the same. You either come out better or you come out bitter. Ooh. So when you are bitter against society, there's no armed robber who is a first offender. Mm -hmm. Because somebody stole a goat and they gave him six years. Yeah. And the Amrabas in there say, are you stupid? Fall again, six years. Come, let's go robbery. So then the guy joins them and go robbery. But if that person was transformed by learning a craft, by learning something, then they will come out better. And that is my desire that we will help to reform people and bring them out better. Wow. Interesting. What's the next question? Hey, Giovanni, this interview, you deserve a longer time to talk about this man because legends like him deserve all our attention. Great and insightful interview, G Man. I'm watching him at Cape Coast, a place called Dance P. Yes, wow. that's correct. Wow. Uh, the old folks are awake. <laughs> <laughs> this one says, uh, Whoa, Giovanni, G Man, please. Is it true what we hear about our prison? I think I took this earlier. And someone says, Giovanni, is that uh, Rokuto? <laughs> no, it's Akobab. We'll be right back after the break. Stay off. <laughs> so you missed a bigger chunk of the interview with the legend. Yes. G man, and he's got no other social media uh, platform than Facebook. So for those of you asking on social media, if he's on Instagram, no, he's not on there. He's not on Twitter. It's uh, G man on Facebook. Yeah, G love G man. G love G love G man. G -Man. So go on there and let's abuse the friend limit request. Hello, what am I even saying? Is that English? Uh, let's get to we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. A lot has changed since you've been away, and you've been out for how many years now? Um, I've been gone since 2009. Okay. Right. So, and, and you traveled outside Ghana when you came yes, out? Yes, I, I live in New York now. Oh, you live in New York now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, the book also, for those of you asking, uh, do you have any message for them? When is it officially out? You don't have a date? I don't have a date, but we're going to try and get it as early as possible. Okay. Listen, I'll give this you updates. Year, this year. I'll be in touch with him, asking all the questions for you. Yeah. And um, yes, hmm, I've seen a picture of you <laughs> with public enemy. Is it D Chuck? Yeah, Chuck D. Chuck D, Chuck D. Yeah. Wow, this is huge. And also this one. That's Kwabna yeah. Ebwa. Olu, uh, <laughs> yeah. the sports legend, Kwabna Ebwa. Yeah, he, he's like a brother to me. We really? all grew up together. Mm, you were the best man at his wedding. Yes. <laughs> and he provided the music for his wedding. Entertainment King. <laughs> you organized your own 12 year birthday party, yes. and uh, yeah, a picture of you in a, a Shaolin pose. That uh, was for the film that we were doing. Oh, you're filming in Bulga? Yes. Oh, okay. So this is it. That's no. No, you're, you're giving out too much. I'm giving out too much. Okay, that's not gently, guys. <laughs> that's him. Uh, okay, so this copy is the only one he has. So myself, I don't even have one yet. But I so want to read this, and I know a lot of our viewers are home too. But before we let you go, okay. one, a lot has changed now. Sure. A lot has changed in the game. A lot of people want to be stars. What message do you have for them? Um, the thing that I have to say to the young and up and coming is go to want to be famous, but know that God is the source of your talent. Mm. So acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall direct your path. Mm. Don't think that it's your own doing. Whatever talent that God has given you, it's given you for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Use it to the glory of God, and it shall be well with you. Wow. And I'm wrapping up with a few messages here. Wow, Giovanni, the last time I saw your guest was when he was arrested. It's good to see him back stronger and looking more handsome. Yes, uh, Daddy Sam, God's grace is one we can take for granted. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see him on. I've always wanted to see this man. The story is always different. Anytime uh, you hear it from the horse's own mouth. 
please tell him you love him so much. No matter what God has a purpose for him. Thank you. And uh, one here, wow, seven years when I go introduce you to his music. God bless you, G-Man. And uh, we can't wait to grab this copy. Yes, the book is From Fame to Shame. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. an honor having you on here. Thank you for having me and thank you for giving me yeah, a live sanitizer. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so, so uh, much. And I, 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 I wish mean, you a speedy recovery. You told yes, me when yes, I, I came from Australia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You are so the much. hardest working man in oh, showbiz. Oh, I want to say, send me. Who am I? Who am I? 